All right, so thank you so much, man. Let's get it started. I'm so excited to be here this week. Thank you guys so much for joining in, man. It's the Poppy's World Podcast here every Thursday or Friday. The day, the day changes, but you know what? It's always some heat, man. And today I got an amazing, a wonderful, and incredible comic. One of the hardest working comics in Jersey. That's not just me saying that. That's a damn near every comic that I know is saying that. Let's give a big, big, big Poppy's World round of applause to James Camacho. What's up? Man. Thanks for having me, bro. I didn't even know you put on the sunglasses. Your shirt came off. Yeah, you know, I got to put on. comfortable. I got to be in character for this shit. Let's get you comfortable, too, man. I love it. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, man. And, uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Let's talk yeah. about, so who So who are you, man? Um, <laughs> I haven't heard that question in a while. Shit. Um, I'm a comedian. I'm a, I guess I'm an actor. I do a little acting shit. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a comedian first, actor second, and uh, I guess... Uh, Am I a TikToker now? Is that, is that what I am Yeah, now? you're damn near uh, an influencer, bro. Yeah, am I, at one point, are you actually an influencer? Like, uh, what, is it the numbers or is it when people are starting to buy your, your, your merch and shit? You know? I, I, I guess I would be, I, I mean, the thing is, I guess you would say merch. Yeah. But I feel like everybody has influencer in their bio now. Just like a lot of people have comedian in their bio. Yeah. Which is a little disrespectful, but that's neither here nor there. No, but I think that's kind of the, the beauty of it. You know, there's almost like no barriers to entry. But everyone knows, like everyone here is like, I'm a comedian, I'm an influencer. Everyone the, everyone immediately thinks, bullshit. You know, <laughs> yeah, no one's exactly. ever like, oh, yeah, you're an influencer. You're a god. Yeah, how much do you make a year? They always go like, are you fucking for real? And they want to check you to see your uh, account, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You always have, yeah, you have to show your credits nowadays. Like, yeah. what the fuck is that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. So, uh, so let's talk about. So, so how long have you been doing comedy these days? Um, it'll be seven years in um, August. Seven years in August, and yeah. that's including the pandemic, right? That's including the pandemic, which you know, I guess I didn't perform for about a hundred days, but you know, I don't know. I was talking to someone the other day about it, and they're like, "Oh yeah, whatever. I've been doing comedy X." But, you know, minus COVID time. Like, I don't know. Do you have to take that time out? I don't think you should. I think comics are using that so that, like, if they're a little rusty. It's yeah. Like, it's like. It's an excuse. It's an excuse. Yeah. yeah for sure. But I don't think, like, I, the whole time I was still thinking comedy, doing Zoom comedy, even though that's not, like, getting on stage. But, um, you know, one thing I learned from the pandemic, like, I didn't get up for, like, 100 days. And then when shit was back, it was, like, you know, whatever, two shows a week. And now I still feel like I don't feel worse than I don't feel like a shittier comic than I was last year. You know, I still feel like like I'm progressing. Do you so. feel like the Zoom rooms helped you? Like, no, you I would say like it was just something to do. It's yeah. better than nothing. But I did a Zoom show the other day. It was like the first one I did in months. And um, it's just not the same, you, you uh, know, because comedy is a lot about moving around and, and performance, too, you know. Yeah. Zoom is good, like, I, I realize, like, if you just had, like, good crafted jokes on Zoom, which a comic should have, yeah. you can kind of get away with more. But I would see a lot of people that, you know, we just see them doing Zoom shows. I'm like, you have no personality. You know, yeah. if you went on stage, you wouldn't be able, you couldn't own a room, so it wouldn't work for you. But in a computer screen, it's a little uh, easier, I guess, to own the room, I guess. Yeah, you know? I guess because you're confident because it's your room. You do it in your room by yourself. Yeah, and it's something because it's like the screen. You look at the screen's right on your face. Yeah. You know, you don't have any distractions, a server or, you know, some drunk guy over there or like even just like, you know, you're just looking around, you know? Yeah, yeah, I definitely hear that. Yeah. Um. So, so you say you've been doing this going to be seven years in August. Uh, What would you say made you want to be a comedian, man? So I was like, I didn't, I always knew I wanted to be in show business, like in comedy and shit, but I didn't know, actually a comedian, I didn't know. I kind of like fell into it. I was doing like, I was in college and I was doing like acting and like um, sketch comedy and writing like a lot of screenplays. I had been writing like short stories and like com drawing comic books like by myself, like in the closet by myself yeah. for so long. I just never shared it with anyone. And then when I got to college, I started just like kind of like, like, Kind of seeing like, oh, can I actually make this into a career? Yeah. But everything was comedy. Comedy screenplays, comedy comic books, comedy short stories. And then, obviously, you just, you know, stand-up kind of like... I remember, like, my first my first exposure to stand-up was, like, watching Comedy Central. Yeah. I was a big South Park person, so I'd watch, like, South Park, then Crank Yankers. And then there was, like, a, a Comic Central Presents. Yeah. So that was, like, my first exposure. And then I was like, oh, maybe I should try that. And remember the first comic you saw? Just... I think, bro, I, I, I'm not 100% sure who it was. It was a Comedy Central present. I think it was Dane Cook. 
I don't know, but it was a, a big act out person. And I just remember he, he, there was, if anyone knows his bit, tell me, but it was this one bit that he had about having a really big head. And like, whenever he would walk somewhere, the head would like, so, like oh yeah, I do remember him. that shit. Is that yeah, Dane yeah, Cook? Yeah, that is Dane Cook. That is Dane yeah, Cook. Yeah. Okay, so it was Dane Cook. I remember the first time I watched it, I was like la- dying laughing. And uh, that was kind of one of like, yeah, that's that, that, that guy is cool, man. Like he's up there fucking being funny. Like that's cool shit, you know. Yeah, man. No, nah, similar story to me too. Yeah. Um, Who's your first uh, person I, you saw? So I so the thing is, I grew up in church, right? So like I like it, a lot of stuff was like super Christian, but there was this one dude, right? So like one time we went to like this this thing, and my parents like we got like this guy named John Gray, <laughs> uh, and he started off as a as a comedian. And yeah. He was funny as hell. Yeah. He would do this bit where he would talk about how he learned his ABCs in church. And it was like gospel, so you'd be like A B C D, and yo, and that shit yeah. killed me the first time I saw it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so that like ever since then, I just always like wanted to do comedy, man. Yeah, dude, it, it's so I, I think about that bit. Um, I got so I guess it was the, I gotta I gotta rewatch that. I've been trying to figure out who it was for so long, but like, doing all this shit, and it's like it's it's not even like a a well constructed joke. It's just fucking funny. It was you just know? funny. Yeah. yeah, he's being stupid. He was good at that shit. I like the yeah. he had this one bit where he was like uh, talking about when he worked at Burger King and like <laughs> people would be like in the drive thru really talking like sexually. Yeah, like, yeah. Like yeah. ordering sexually and shit. Yeah. And the pickles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what my favorite. But like it's so quick because now I do like comedy and like I'm so obsessed with like coming up with a brilliant idea or a brilliant bit. And then like I think about what used to make me laugh before I was like so into stand up where I can't even fucking watch people and laugh anymore, right. you know? And I'm like, why am I trying so hard to to come up with brilliant ideas? I guess that's the whole point, but like sometimes I feel like I just I kind of lose my um I don't know, I, I like I'm far too in it and I'm trying too hard when it's just like the whole point is just as long as people go, "Ha!" like that's really all yeah. it is, you know? That's good. that yeah, that kind of leads into my next question. I was yeah. going to ask you, so what do you do personally when people don't laugh? Um if people don't like, if I tell a joke and no one laughs, yeah, yeah, I mean, I try to make fun. I just try to like pretend like it doesn't bother me. It always bothers me when some people don't laugh at my at my stuff. But I just pretend like like I just you know act like I'm confident and be like, ah, you feel, oh, you want to okay, whatever? I'm gonna keep going on. Yeah. And that's the only thing you could do because the moment you're up there and kind of like, uh oh, you know, or like, uh oh, you guys don't like me, and then they start losing respect for you. You know, yeah. It's like when you like it's like, it's like if you're dating a girl, you know, and like. They just, uh, you do something where you do something really not masculine and then they're just like, oh, who is this guy? You know, yeah. they just lose respect for you. They don't want to bang you anymore. Same thing with the crowd. They just don't want to, now they don't want to laugh at you. Yeah, they're not fucking with you at all. Yeah. And like, I'm, I'm confident enough to the point now where it's like, you know, if something doesn't work, I got something else coming. Or like, I know if it's a joke I know works usually and it's not, it doesn't work now, then I'm like, all right, it's, it's a joke I know. It's, it's kind of, it's your fault kind of to the crowd, you know? Yeah. So it's all about confidence though. I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about your first show. Like, you do you remember uh, like what what like one of your first kind of bits was or anything like that? Shouts out to Tony Loud. Thank you so much for joining in. Tony Loud, I love he's that dude. He's always he's such a he's such a pump up guy. Every yeah. every time you see him. Yeah, he's the yeah he's awesome yeah. man. He's he's gonna be on the show in a couple weeks. Shouts out to Tony man. Nice. Um. So the first show I did. Um. I did a so I it's funny I did a show when I was like I did a set when I was thirteen. But I basically just did all of like Dane Cook's bits yeah. <laughs> from that thing because I just wanted to like because I thought it was so funny and I remember it was like this it's so funny I had the Dasani water bottle because it was like my I had a, like a very alternative English teacher and she used to do this thing once a month like one Friday a month she would have no lesson plan she we would just all kind of like the class would turn she would turn into a, a coffee house she'd yeah. call it and then the whole class they didn't have to they could do whatever they wanted like people could do their homework they could like talk to their friend screw around but also if students wanted to come up and perform something like poetry art whatever music they could do that with this time so i decided i want i i remember seeing uh i get uh the dane cook thing like i want to i want to do stand up so I basically just did all this shit in front of the class and uh that was my first set and i was so i was so nervous i've never been this nervous ever on stage but i remember like i had um all the jokes written on my hand, and it was all smeared up and shit because I was sweating. I had a no microphone. I actually used the, a Dasani water bottle as, you, as, as a microphone. Mic. Yeah, and I remember like I had this whole set, and I I got up there and I blanked. I couldn't remember um, what the first joke was supposed to be, so I just started talking, and I just did the first thing I could remember, 
And then it actually went really well. <laughs> and I, I think I must have only been for like a minute or two, but I did really well. And um, then I didn't do it again for like 10 years after until I was in uh, college. In college and shit. That's yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you. I was a, thie- a joke thief. When I was thirteen, I feel, I feel like that's how. A lot, I mean, I I don't steal jokes, but I feel like a yeah. lot of comics start off like that. Well, yeah, it's like I, I I'm I'm joking. Like I'm not, like everything I write now is obviously um, my own, and I'm very like I don't even I don't know how people could do other people's jokes. Like it's like how it's like f- fucking someone with not your dick. You yeah, know, it's yeah. like how do, how do you get any pleasure from it? You yeah, know, if no. all that work and stuff, you go up there and you're just like you're just a phony. But I think everyone when they're younger, they see someone. Um, and, and I mean young as in like a, a teenager, teenager mind It's yeah. just like we're very, um, we, uh, we were copycatty and like, right. just kind of like, you know, so I just wanted to like, um, be cool. And like, I'm sure some like real high like, diehard comedy people are like, well, you fucking joke thief, like there's no <laughs> excuse. But it's like, I was just trying to be cool. I didn't even think I wanted to do comedy forever. I just wanted that. Like I was like, I was a kid that like that was so trying so hard yeah. to fit in. So that was like the best day of my life. Like I remember I did that, everyone laughed and like there was like this really popular kid in the class who would always like fucking punch me in the stomach <laughs> um for no reason. He like saw me do that set and then I got off and I remember he's like he like pulled up a chair. You could sit with us today. Like <laughs> and then I, I sat there and I felt great and then like the next day I tried to sit down next to him. He's like, Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. That was that was a one time thing, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny as hell, dude. Get your big head out of here. <laughs> oh man. Well, hey, look, Dane Cook, Dane Cook, if you're hearing this, man, you helped James out that way. I gotta rewatch school. that special because do you 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 remember that I big head? I remember head thing? that big Okay, because yeah. I've been saying that to people and people are like, I don't know, I might have heard that. So I'm gonna actually re- his, his Comedy yeah. Central presents, I'm gonna rewatch it. Yeah. Dane Cook was big back in the day. Bro, man. he was the shit. He was so funny. Yeah. And He's he's just not as funny now. Like he really was. Like when he was doing, I I, I was never like a hater of him, because bro, he was fucking h- h- hilarious. And then I don't know what happened. It's just the stuff is just not doesn't I hit, hit I us hard that now. He actually didn't want to do comedy. Like he didn't like it anymore. Like stand up. I don't know. That's he's just like he's just like being a movie star. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, that's I mean that's understandable. Yeah. The money. You know? The money. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Not having to travel as much. Um. Yeah. Okay. So what would you say? Uh, speaking about that, what would you say is your biggest influence in comedy today? Um, like dead or alive, it doesn't matter. Oh, like Bill Burr is probably like, because Bill is like, I like Bill because he tackles hard topics, but he also has a lot of jokes that are so like about him and his life and his his wife and his kids. Like mm-hmm. I really, I those are the jokes I really think are the funniest when people kind of bitch about their 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 marriage or their girlfriend and their kids. Yeah, I don't know why that makes <laughs> me laugh. I guess so it's, it's relatable. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. How long have you got? You've been uh, in a relationship for now? Yeah, I'm in a relationship. I think. We're over over two years now. Yeah. yeah, I guess once you hit that two year mark, you know, you like you, it's like it's a great thing to be in love and have your partner. But then it's also like you know, you get to the you get past the like, oh, nothing annoys me about this person phase. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's still that's still always there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you learn, you just learn how to uh, not deal with it, but you just learn to accept it and like it all. It's all about like how much you're willing to like. Uh, what are you willing to uh, put up with in a way that sounds terrible? But like I was talking. This- <laughs> I heard this comic do this joke, and it was a, I think it was a guy, male comic. No, it was a female comic, actually. That was, like, a relationship is, like, basically two, like, mentally ill people just learning how to deal with the other person's mental illness. I think it was Sarah Talmash's joke. I'm butchering it, but it was basically that premise of, like, yeah. you're just, like, kind of, like, learning how... You're just accepting the other person's flaws because, you know... People that you don't end up with, you're like, man, I can't deal with this. I can't. And then you leave, you know. But people with like that you're really in love with, you're like, man, this is tough to deal with. But I, all right, you it's know. It's like fuck it, yeah. Let's yeah, like, I'll it. just keep going. Yeah. I think you learn a lot about yourself too, because you end up like realizing absolutely your flaws, you know. Well, you also learn what you you your will your your what your uh, level is. Um, not your level, your ceiling, like how much your tolerance right. is for what you can what put up with, you know, with or, or where your deal breakers are, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, let's talk about your best set and your worst set. Where was it? Where were they? You know, how was it? What happened? Let's go best set mm. first. Best set? Um, you know what? It's probably like um, I was at the – I was doing – I was opening for Damon Wayne's Jr. for a weekend. And it was just like – it was a lot of pressure because I'm opening for Damon at the Stress Factory, which is a club I grew up doing open mics. 
and uh, the owner of the club was like hosting because it was such a big deal. Every show was sold out. And, you know, it was one of those things where you're like, you get it. And you're like, it was one of those weekends that it went every every show went well. Um, and, you know, it was one of those proving weekends where I'm like, oh, like not only did I prove to, to the owner of the club, I can, you know, kill for a sold out crowd proved to uh, but also proved it to myself yeah you know yeah. that like i i can uh, i can hang and like you know and then so i would say like the saturday night i like it's it, i have it recorded it's pretty much what i send out to get work now yeah and that's probably like i guess my best set um just and also just like that whole weekend was like such a big um um deal for me because at the end of the weekend damon goes like i always i thought because i got a call like the night before to open for him for like a couple weekends and I thought someone had canceled because you get a call that last minute. You, you assume someone canceled and like you're like the second option. Yeah. And then uh, Damon at the last show, we did like 16 shows together at the last one. He goes, uh, he's like, uh, I was like, thanks, man. Like, I know I like I, I really thought like, you know, it was probably like I, I'm glad this like backup worked out, whatever. And he goes, no, dude, like I chose you. Like I watched everyone's video they sent me, and like I thought you were the most interesting one. <laughs> I was like, that's freaking epic, dude. Bro, I almost like, like, like I, I, I've never. My parents have never said anything that nice to me, dude. It was like <laughs> the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me, and just meant so much. And you know, now Damon won't text me back, but it's still feel pretty. <laughs> it's still pretty, pretty good. Um, it's still, uh, it's great. So let me ask you: If you, uh, you, you've worked with a couple comedians now. You worked with, uh, you know, Damon Wayne Jr. Yeah. Um, who? Uh, anybody else you want to name drop? <laughs> <laughs> no man i mean i don't like i was something i realized in comedy it's like um if i'm gonna name drop comics like like damon waynes jr obviously people he's a celebrity but no one's gonna know who the fuck i'm talking about so i'm gonna be like i could say like these comics names that work at the comedy cellar and stuff but people are gonna be like he's he's he sounds like he, he's name dropping so hard but i don't know <laughs> any of these people but no, I'm, I'm, um, no, I've worked with some really res- uh, comics that have been really highly respected. I have done some stuff with celebrities, but I, you know, it, that doesn't matter, bro. Like, I'm still like, you know, trying to uh, make a name for myself. I hear that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, you worked with a lot of people, but um, if you could work with any any comedian, who would it be? I mean, I guess I gotta say Bill Burr. You know, he. You know what's funny? Like, I've um, crossed paths with a lot of. Celeb- celebrity comedians um and I'll, I'll, of course you always feel like i, I mean I, I guess these for example let's say uh jay-z like i've done stuff with jay-z and it's amazing yeah, you know okay. you obviously feel like holy shit like but bill burr i I, did, I didn't really work with him i was just at a comedy club and here's the beautiful thing about comedy clubs in new york city it's new york city it's the best place for comedy and these celebrity comedians like they go there like yeah. you'll see celebrities trying to work out material so one time i was at this club um, the stand, and I, I I don't perform at the stand, but I was there like hanging out, and I saw Bill Bird walk in. I was downstairs, and I could see him like walk in from upstairs, and like my whole body started like kind of trembling, like I got really like starstruck. I didn't even get the, a good look at him. I just saw him from above, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my whole body got all weird and shit, <laughs> you know. Another person is I I don't know if this is gonna piss people off, but like I remember I was at uh, this comedy club called Gotham, which is a great yeah, club. Yeah. They have this. They have this little wing in the back where you can watch the show, or comics and like the staff hang out. And then I'm sitting there, and then um, there's like a a buzz in the air, like like oh we heard like there's gonna be some celebrity drop ins. I'm standing there watching the show, and then like this I could feel like these people like inch toward like you know you can feel yeah, people yeah, yeah, in your yeah. peripheral, you can hear them, and they could just feel it. I feel these like people like coming up close to me. I turn around. It's it's Louis C.K. and Sarah Silverman. And Shit, and yeah. right like two inches like closer like than we are yeah, yeah. Uh, sitting right now, and they're just talking about like oh I'm good you you want to go on before me like oh, look at this crowd they're pretty good huh what are you working on I'm just and the whole time I'm just sitting there like scared if I move uh, one inch anywhere that I'm gonna bump into them yeah, and they're like yeah. get this fucking nerd out of here <laughs> get him out of here so I'm just sitting there like just sh- just shivering dude and. So, I think a lot of comics like love Louis. I, I've interviewed a lot of comics, and everybody. Yeah. Every, the consensus is everybody still loves Louis's comedy. Yeah. Know? Well, he's 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 he's. I mean, here's, and I I used to make jokes about it. Um, but it's like you can. I mean, you can hate, um, him for what he did, 
It's weird for sure, but like his comedy is great. It's like comedy. the com- the comedy itself even is his great. Show. I used to love the Louis. The show on FX, the FX was bro, good. it's brilliant. Mm-hmm. It's a even brilliant the show. The HBO one was okay, but the FX one was great. I never seen the HBO one, but the FX one is fantastic, yeah. bro. It's a, it's a, it's art, it's, you know. Yeah, it's one of my favorite shows. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but yeah, you can say anything about like I always had this thing. With, um, I don't want to get in trouble here, but it's like I always had these things of like these celebrities that get in trouble. And it's like, yeah, they're pieces of shit for what they did for sure. They should go to jail. I mean, yeah, it's so if if um, let's just say Bill Burr like does it be, starts going on a mass murder spree, you know, it's like okay, yeah, you got to put him away for life. But his fucking comedy still great, you know. Yeah. You you can't you yeah. can't just go back on it. It's like right now, I I do understand because I like used the to art versus the artist, that's, right? That's well, a, I used to I used to say about this about some really controversial names. And one thing that I will concede with is, like, it depends on what the person did. Um, and I do realize that once you know the person singing it or, or telling it or performing it, once you know if, the horrible shit they've done, it ruins it for you. Yeah. I can see that for sure. I can see that. But um, what, like, Louis did... Um, I mean, the guy, all his jokes are about jerking off yeah, anyways, yeah, you know, yeah. so what do you expect? He, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was, he's always, you know, been that guy. Yeah. But like you, I listened to his, uh, album the other day, chewed up. It's hilarious, mm-hmm. dude. Hilarious. I can't stop. You can't stop me from laughing. I'm just going to laugh, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, so where would you say, where would you say like you get all your, a lot of your material from? So a lot of, a lot of my material, um, um, comes from just like what happens in my life. It's either the stuff that happens in my life, things I feel really strongly about, and um, just shit like, you know, just telling my, you know, my upbringing. Mm -hmm. That's the three things, you know. Um, Right now, I'm working on, like, jokes about, like, I have these things that come and, I have a lot of jokes that come and go. Like, I'm kind of working on this dumb joke about the vaccine, Mm -hmm. how, like, when it first came out, people were waiting outside the line of hospitals for, like, extra doses, like, fucking crackheads, you know. And then now you can get it at Walgreens. So <laughs> yeah. how stupid must they feel that they waited out for like 20, 28 hours? Hours, hours yeah, and, hours, and bro. you saw them in their in like two degree weather in their uh-huh. coats and shit. And now you, it's like it's like you know if you go Black Friday shopping and you trample your sister for a TV, and then like next month it's like f- fucking free everywhere. Yeah, you're well, just like, just well, I didn't. Away. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, so I have things like when things happen in news, I kind of like if I feel like oh what a, you know. Like, I, I have, like, a initial, like, fuck, what? Mm-hmm. Then I try to make jokes about it. But sometimes, a lot of times, those go away. Like, I had vaccine jokes about how people were posting it, the selfies of them. Yeah. But I don't even do those anymore because they just get old. And then the stuff I really, like, like, now, like, I'm, I have, like, these little short things um, about, like, PC culture mm-hmm. that I'm trying to work on, how, like, you know, some things you say, like, it, like, like comical things where it's, like, like the other day, I told a, a girl I understood and then she got mad at me because she was talking about her period, you know. <laughs> so like just stuff yeah, like yeah. that, that um, jokes like that, and then um, yeah, so it's just stuff. And then you know, I'm still working on jokes about my Chinese Puerto Rican upbringing. You know, yeah, there's man. always material there. Yeah, there's all. That's definitely always some material there. Do yeah. You, do you prefer Chinese or Puerto Rican food? Um, I would say Chinese food. Yeah, me yeah. Too. I ate most. Don't of get me wrong. Me too, <laughs> bro. I love. Uh, I think if I had uh, like a last meal, it would mm-hmm. be like a roast, like barbecue pork and a uh, Peking duck. Hell yeah! With and it's, and just yeah. Rice. There's something about that Peking duck, man. That shit is incredible, bro. I love. I love the skin, bro. I love the fucking just. It's so juicy. Yeah, and it's just. Pause. It's just you can like delicious. suck on it. You know, pa- like I don't know. You, it's like succulent. Pause. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. It's real succulent, bro. It, it is the best thing, and it's like um. There's a. Like a can, it's 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 Cantonese, all that shit. So mm-hmm. there's a Cantonese place right by my apartment, and like on a Sunday, if I'm feeling like I don't give a fuck, I'll just get like a triple meat combo and rice, and just it's the best, bro. Yeah, it's the best. Awesome. Yeah. Now, uh, um, I'm we getting about we about to get into some games real quick. Yeah. Uh, but let me get you. Let me ask one more question. What do you feel like the future of comedy is for post uh, post pandemic for you? Oh, for me. Not not the whole not actual well both well well both for you <laughs> specifically and yeah. then like you know you know I mean I feel like comedy everybody makes their own way but like yeah. in general how do you feel like it for yourself and for you know the comedy scene yeah well for me I'm really trying to um something I realized is that like you know you got to make your own everything's uh what is it do it yourself so it's DIY mm-hmm. everything's DIY now you know I I joke all the time about how like. I wish I was. I grew up in the '70s doing comedy, where it was just only. only there's no internet. 
Um, there was cable television. All you had to do was your spots at night. Yeah. And then try to get on Letterman, and then, you know, that's it. Your career was made. Not saying that was easy, but, like, yeah. now it's, like, it doesn't matter if you get on late night. Um, of course, you want to get it. It will help you. Yeah. But, like, right now it's, like, there's no no one's really, like, looking for you. Right now it's, like, you have to make your own audience. Right. And then they have to, then they see, this guy's got a million followers. Okay, now we'll talk to him. Before it was, like, hey, we're going to find this one person that we think is funny and, and push him. So it's almost less about talent and more about class. Well, it's already like it's you're a proven commodity right, if right, you have right. that's why you don't even need these networks. Like right. you look at a guy like Andrew Schultz, he did it all it, all on YouTube, yeah. you know. And now Netflix, then Netflix wanted to buy yeah, his yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah. you know. So that that's for me for my future um I I I don't know if I'm selling myself short um but it's like I already feel like I'm at I'm getting to the age now. I'm not that old, but it's like I just feel like 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 there are a lot of comics that I've seen that I've started with that are like, we love this person. They get booked at all the all the good clubs and, you know, they they get on late night. And for me, I just feel like if that was gonna happen for me, I think it were, it really would have happened. Not to say that like no it one likes me. It can't happen, yeah, but I'm just saying it's like for me, it's like I just gotta one, I can't just wait for anyone. But two, I feel like I already feel like I'm at the point where it's just like I just kinda gotta make my own um fan base and make my own thing, put my own stuff out there, and then, um, you know, then just get people to look at me mm-hmm. in a different way. I just feel like, like I'm ethnic, but I'm also like, you know, I'm like a, I'm like a straight guy, and like I'm not really like anything too like fun, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know. So you know, no crazy pink hair or something. Yeah, it, yeah, and I'm like, you know, if you hear my uh, my jokes, it's like, yeah, I do like stuff about being mixed race, but then a lot of it's like, you know, I was never one of these guys that like, oh, I can't get laid, you know, for like yeah. my act was like, like I'm dating this, dating that, yeah. and I don't, I, 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 I might sound like a douchebag, but it's like, I just feel like, um. I just got to kind of like do I, I, I basically what I'm trying to say is like I feel like if I was to get chosen, I would have gotten like chosen earlier to get kind of like pushed. But um, everyone's path is different. Yeah. So for me, I'm just going to like put out my my stuff and just keep um, touring and keep like just just making sure that when people come see me, they think I'm funny. Like that's my main thing, you know, for sure. dude. And hey, I think. For what it's worth, I think you're doing pretty well for yourself. I mean, we hit we about to hit 10k followers on on Instagram. Yeah, if you guys I mean, on TikTok, yeah. what about TikTok? TikTok is TikTok is I find TikTok pretty easy. Yeah, I don't know yeah, if that's yeah. cocky, yeah. but like, um, I think I'm at 30k easiest, yeah. on TikTok. Yeah, uh-huh. I, like TikTok is, but it's also it's not to like it's easy. They make it easy. Yeah, you post something, it's it it's not that hard to get into explore or whatever yeah. the hell you call it or for you page, yeah. yeah you just hashtag for you and it's yeah. you're gonna get seen by a, b- a bunch of people and then those people are so easy like they follow you yeah, yeah, yeah. instagram it's like um it either gets does great and you get a couple you get a nice little push or it's just nothing yeah. you just feel like you wasted a whole day filming something yeah, yeah, you know yeah. it's definitely um and there's there's definitely more like if you have 10k on instagram i mean what's impressive on tiktok 100k you know like 10k on TikTok, I don't think is that impressive, but not to say that's no, it's you know, just not, not to offend anyone. Yeah, no. yeah, so if you know anyone listening, follow me. We're almost at 10k. We're at 9,500. Um, I always feel like it's just like a to make a wishy when I say stuff like this. If yeah, you're if you're fo- if you're watching us on the FTV radio, thank you for tuning in. We're here with James Camacho, Camacho Bro. You can see it on the screen. He is an <laughs> incredible uh, com- com- comedian here out of New York City, man, and he's taking over, man. So he's about to compete for his time, his slot on the Poppy's World show, and it's going to be so amazing because it is a comedy competition, and he's going to try to win the belt. Let's put some epic music on for you. Ooh. Ooh. I didn't know we were, I was going to win a belt. Oh, yeah, Or baby, could win a belt. It. Yeah, uh, yeah. The belt. I'm going to have the belt next week. If you didn't come to our show yesterday, the Wild and Wednesday show, you missed out. And we're going to have you. I, I think we said we're going to have you in June, right? I think June 6th, 9th or June something. 9th. Yeah. June 9th. Yeah, so he's about to compete for his his turn. So here's the here's the challenge, all right? Okay. So you get six six games. We're gonna this first one to five points. You win, all right? So there's five six different games. The first game is called Humble Beast. All right, humble beast is pretty simple. Uh, there's a song. There's a song on here, yeah. and you have to hum it, and you try to have to try to get me to figure out what the song is by humming. You got a, you got about uh, thirty seconds to get that in. All okay. right. What if I don't know the song? 
Oh, then we uh, do another. Then you just pick another one. Okay, good. All right. Uh, game two is called Riddle Me This. And uh, the way that this goes is that you're going to spin. Each each number is the game that you pick. Game two is called Riddle Me This. There's a riddle on there. You have to, if you get the riddle correct, uh, you get the point. Uh, game three is uh, Name That Comedian. I'm going to play a snippet of a comedian uh, and see if you guess it within the first five seconds. Okay. And that's how you get a point. Okay. Game four is Tongue Twister. We just got to get this uh, one of the tongue twisters that's on the paper. Yeah. Say it five times fast. You win. Game five is do not laugh. It's either you pick a dad joke written down, you make something up, or uh, uh, or whatever. If there's an act out, act it out to tell you this is getting really epic. This music. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's getting super epic. Yeah, I know. I want to fucking uh, <laughs> climb a mountain and kill a fucking uh, dragon. Hey, game six. Game six is simple. It's a taste test. I'm, uh, we got. A, I got a couple snacks here for you. Okay. You got a, a blindfold. You're gonna try to guess what it is uh, by feel and taste. All right. So let's go ahead. Go pick up. Pick up the dice and roll it and let's see what number you get. One. Oh, wow. game one. All right. See, there you go. So game eyes. one. Uh, so game one humble is beast. humble beast. All right. So I'm gonna close my eyes. You're gonna show the camera what. Uh, 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 what is the name of that song? You show this camera and that camera. Okay, right there. I think I know which one. I think I know which one. All right, and let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. All right, and let's go. Let's see if you can get it. Um, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. Mm. I only know the chorus, so I'm just doing the chorus over and over again. Mm. 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 Uh, okay, wait. Is it um? Mm -hmm. What era is it? 90s? Is it a 90s? Okay. Yeah, or two, early 2000s. All right, do it one more time. Let me see if I can get it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> is it, is if, it, if you get it, I won't, I, I won't it, be able to. Lean back. Ah! <laughs> lean back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Okay, well, let's see. Let's see. Okay, oh, hold on. I got something for that. Let's yeah. see. Where's it at? Where's it at? Okay, Woo! okay. That's point number one. Okay, four <laughs> more points to get you a spot on the show, all right? All right, so let's roll again. Let's see what he gets. All right. All right. Four. Oh, game four. Which game was that? One, two, three. Tongue Twister. All right, so there's a tongue twi well, twister. Yeah. This is game is called Twisted Tongue. Uh, you're going to read it out uh, and see if you say it five times fast. I'll read it to you first if you want. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see. Mm. That one's no good. No, that one's good. But. Uh, this one says Red Buick, Blue Blue. Mm. Oh, man. That's gonna, I'm Asian. Buick. Those R's and L's are going <laughs> to fuck me up. <laughs> Red Buick, Blue Buick, three Buick, go through it. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a bad one. Five times fast. Let's see if you get that. Red Buick, Bu Blah. <laughs> Red. All right, let me, I want to get through it at least once. Red Buick, Blue Buick, three Buick, go through it. Red oh. Buick, Blue Buick, three Buick, go through it. Red Buick, Blue Blue. It, ugh. <laughs> fuck! If you get it three times fast, I'm going to give you the point. La la la. Red Buick, Blue Buick, Three Buick, go through it. Red Buick, Blue Buick, Three Buick, go through it. Red Buick, Blue Buick, Three Buick, go through it. Okay, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. Let's go to it one more time. Come on. God, give it to him. That was exhausting. That one was exhausting. I put, I put more effort to that. <laughs> that one was, I'll give you that. Yeah, that one was hella exhausting. All right, yeah. let's, so let's, okay, there you go. Late, late, but it's still worth it. All right, so let's roll again. You got that one. So what do I, what do I have, two points now? You got two points now. <laughs> Uh -oh, four uh, again. We another. did four. We'll do yeah. Do yeah, you, you gave you got four. You wanna do another one? Yeah, if you want you you can either take a, take another what was it? Game four is riddle me this or no? No, it's tongue twister. Tongue twister. Yeah. So you can either do another tongue twister or roll again. Let's do something else. Five. Okay, game five. Game five is called Do Not Laugh. All right. Okay. I'm gonna you pick one of these. You could if it you either make something up, there's an action on here, or a dad joke. Pick which one of Make one up. Okay, make one up. Let's see. I make one up. Yeah, make one up. Say so whatever. Wait, I, don't, I thought you were gonna tell me a joke. Wait, so you're not. You're not. Wait, you make you make up a dad joke. Yeah. Or whatever you know off off the top of your okay, head. Okay, okay. And that's it. You just gotta get me to laugh. What's uh What's a fish without an eye? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> that's stupid. But I give you that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's three points right there. All, All right. right. That's definitely a correct answer. Let's give them that one. Okay. There you go. All right. All right, so let's roll again. Let's do it again. Come on. Three. Okay, game three. Game three is name that comedian. Oh, perfect. Okay, so let's see. Let me give you... Let's do this Dane Cook. One. This one. <laughs> the funny thing is I have Dane Cook on here, and I was just on Dane Cook, but I'm not. Let's see if you get I this really one. want to hear that, that head joke again. 
This is an old school comic, so let's see if you get this one. Okay. Damn, he got an eight minute standing ovation. Holy shit. What? Oh, fuck. He transitioned into an actor. Steve Martin? Steve Martin, baby. There that's it. There you go. Ooh, four points, four points. All right. Wait, that's four points. Yeah, sorry. I can't believe some I give myself no credit, bro. I, I didn't think I had any jokes, and then I didn't I was like, I was like, I will never guess who this no, is. No, see, bro, you need bro, more I'm the most negative bro. person in my brain. <laughs> I'm like, I'll never guess who this, who this is. Oh man. All right, so last going. Let's see if you get this next right. game, you win. All right, let's do it. Oh, uh, we did game five, right? Yeah. So let's do it again. I guess we should eat something, right? Six. Oh, yeah, taste right. test. All right. So here we go. Here's the blindfold. This is a clean blindfold. Don't worry. I washed it. Okay. Uh, that is a Puerto Rican flag, so that's half of you. All right. So we're going to cover your eyes, and I'm going to show the people what we're doing today. Let's see. Don't. All right. So put your hand out. Okay. I'm going to show. Can you see anything? I'm, uh, yeah, no, you can't see No, anything. I can't see anything. Uh, even if you did, too. It doesn't matter. All right. This is what we're doing. We're going to see if, he get, if he's going to notice... Um, if he's telling the truth about his heritage, he should know what this is. Oh, great. At least half of it. He should know half. Half of it should know what it is. One more time. I feel, like I, I feel like I know what it is already. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Let's go. All right, just off of hand feel. Oh. Do you feel like you've had one of these before? Just straight off feeling it. You could try to guess what it is just before you even taste it. Oh, fuck. I'm not going to get this one. It's a cookie, I know. It's definitely a cookie. All right, taste it then. Want a sugar cookie? Right? Uh, what the fuck? Have you cookie? tasted this before? Yeah, I have, yeah. Okay. Can you describe what it looks like or what like how uh, how it comes in, what it comes in? It, it's 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 uh beige, like br- like light brown. Uh huh. And there's little uh, I don't know, like salt on it. I don't know what this the, the it's shit's like. It's like sugary salt. Sugary right? salt. Okay. Yeah. The sugar. Ugh, what is it called? Motherfucker! I have these. All- these are good. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna have another one. Yeah, put it in, in front of you. That's those sounds should be a little bit of a clue. As oh, well. oh, oh! It's in a tin. Yeah. It's hell yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, what are they you called? don't have to give me the name, but if you give me just anything close to it. Uh, Parmation, something like that? Is that even close? <laughs> it is called a Danish Delight ah, Butter Cookie. Danish you knew that, Parma- uh, <laughs> <laughs> At least in my heritage. What I'm going to give you... Well, no, it's these are really Puerto Rican. You can take that off. I man. know. That's why I know what they are. Yeah. These are real Puerto Rican. Like, you know, this thing is used... If you guys oh, don't know, yes. these, this thing is used in the Spanish household for everything. Bro, oh, my, my grandma... My grandma died so early when I was, so I only was like seven when she died, bro. But she had these all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. So good. So you knew it. So I'm gonna give you half a point. Okay, yeah, I didn't know the name though. Roll one more time. You get this next n- next game. You win. So good. All right. Wait, which game we haven't played yet? The first game, right? I think it did all. Um, uh, we did humble beast. Riddle me this. Let's do it. Riddle me this. Okay. You get this riddle right, and you win. Oh. Okay. Hmm. These things, some, sometimes with these riddles, I'll give it to you if you if you get it right technically. Okay. All right. Okay. What goes up, but never comes down? What goes up but never comes down? You have thirty seconds on the clock to get the answer right, and I'm gonna play it now. What goes up but never comes down? <laughs> I hate that fucking music. It makes me nervous. <laughs> um, you have another cookie if you want. My dick. Well, your dick comes down. You're not, no, not, you're not, my, a, not my dick. I have a boner right now. <laughs> um, oh, what goes up but doesn't come down? A balloon? No, it goes down. All the right. Time? Like the, 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 the time? The clock? Something like that? Let me see. <laughs> Let me see what the survey says. 
All right, they're going to give it to you on a technicality. Okay. But it says right here, what goes up but never comes down? Your age. Oh. What comes up but never comes down? Your age. So, James Camacho. Time did you work. You have won Time your worked. slot on the Poppy's World podcast. Not only on the podcast, but what? On the comedy competition, man. We're so excited to have you. On June 9th, you're going to get your slot all right, I got a last couple of f- uh, sure f- quick fire questions that we're going to get you out of here, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, what is the first thing you do when you, uh, uh, what is the first thing you do and what you think of when you wake up? First thing I do, <laughs> how am I going to, how am I going to make it in comedy? That's the first thing. I, I go to the gym the first thing in the morning. The first thing I do, I, w- I wake up like, all right, what do I got to do today? And it's always like, um, like, I go to the gym first and I start like my work, my work day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. And then my, I see my girlfriend, and then, um, yeah, you know she's in there too. Yeah, so, yeah, I hear that. Hot or cold? Um, a cold. Cold. Yeah. Why? Air conditioning. Okay. They're really good. Yeah, it's uh, which is gonna be big now that it's gonna be summer soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hear that. I need one for sure. You don't have one? No, I have one, but yeah, I just need one for girth reasons. You know. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, hot dogs or hamburgers? Hamburgers. Mm. Skittles or Starburst? Starburst. I always look for blank in a woman. Uh, cuteness. Mm. Ass or titties? Titties. Uh, favorite show of all time? Um, Entre- uh, South Park Entourage. It's a real to tie, yeah. Mm. Have they ever done a mashup? Has they did an episode of South Park like Entourage? N- I don't think so. They could. They've I think they've quoted each other mm-hmm. in it maybe. Our our Entourage has quoted South Park. But I don't think South Park ever did a thing on Entourage. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh ass or titties. Did I ask you that? Yeah, I said titties. Oh, you did say titties. Yeah. Favorite cologne or scent in general? I don't know. I don't really use cologne, but I I just got some old spice shampoo and I think that smells pretty good. Mm, I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> if you were stuck on an island for th- for for a year with only three uh, comedy albums, who and what would they be? Comedy albums. Um, I think Bill Burr's like um, you. You know, you people are all the same. Why did I? Why do I do this? I, I think it would just. Uh, I guess I can't. I just have Bill Burr in there. Um, so yeah, it would be like, why do I do this? And then um, you people are all the same. And then maybe what's a comedy album? I guess like Louis, like. Chewed up or hilarious, you know. So we got Bill Burr's. What was the first one? You, you, uh, you people are all the same. Or, or you people are all the same. Is this for why do I do this? Is the first one, and I think you people are all the same. Is the third one. Those are two of my favorites of his, and I guess uh, hilarious by Louis. Mm-hmm. That's when he like, talks about his divorce and stuff. Mm-hmm. And the last one, or you, pick, you pick two Bill Burr and then one Louis. Yeah, um, if I were to pick a third, if I had to pick three different people, maybe the last one would be like, um, um, I don't know. Let's just keep it. Let's just keep it. My own album. How about that? The extra yeah. credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yo, yo you could pre-order their extra credit uh, album out right now on i on iTunes, on Apple Music, on Amazon, Amazon yeah. as well. We're gonna we're about to get there on. Spotify we're, we're on number too. two at uh, Amazon right now. Yeah, definitely yeah. get that man. Uh, with a May sixteenth drop, right? Yes, we can Next pre-order Saturday. it right now. Yeah. Next Saturday, it's gonna be live. We're excited for that. Um, uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? I'm sorry, May 18th. It's a May Tuesday. 18th. Yeah, I, fu- I don't even know the release date of my own fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. May 18th, extra credit album, James oh. Camacho. De- definitely go pre order that, man. Yeah. We need those streams. Yes. Um, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Probably flying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, flying, just flying around, you know, flying away from my problems, you know. Flying to gigs, mm-hmm. just fucking fly there. Don't have to fucking take a go through TSA and you know have my my uh, water checked. Yeah, you know? most definitely. Yeah, um, I'd probably pick like um, I like to say you know, instead of flying, I'd pick that. You ever seen that movie like Looper or where they like jump and he could like or jump? Is it jump? 
Jumper, yeah. Jumper, jumper yeah. where he like looks at it like a picture and he can go wherever he wants and that shit. Oh, really? Yeah, that shit is sick. Yeah, I feel like flying... But flying is cool, too. Flying would be good, but I think you'd get old and then you would want to... You would get too lazy to fly. You'd be like, I gotta fly to fucking LA. It's like five hours. And then you just don't want to do it, you know? But I don't think humans could fly faster than planes, so it would still be kind of a bitch. Yeah, I think it's, it would be kind of a bitch. You can get would, luggage. I feel like and you still would be exerting energy. It's not like... Or you have to, I mean, you're gonna carry your, your luggage on your back, Yeah. you know? So that, even, that wouldn't even work. Yeah, you would have to have like a like four humans carrying. Maybe people. maybe invisibility so I can fuck with people. Yeah. Yeah, or just leave. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. I always wake up. I wait. What? Oh, I always wake up. I always wake up. Um, with like I don't want to say a smile on my face. That's because that's not true, <laughs> and it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Um, I always wake up with like, I guess like anticipation. I always wake up with like like hunger and like um like the desire to like get get shit done, you know? Like I wake up with like I always tell people this is like comedy is so great and I like love what I do because I still wake up as hungry as I did like when I first started. It's still yeah. not old, boring or anything. I don't wake up ever yeah. like I don't want to not today, you know. So yeah, I still wake, wake up, up hungry. Yeah, hungry. Yeah, I wake up hungry. Me too. Yeah. F- figuratively and literally. Same, yeah. Yeah. Fig- yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, weed or alcohol? Alcohol. Beer or alcohol? Be- alcohol. Alcohol. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Like liquor, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, if I could work with anybody, I would work with... Uh, B- Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Yeah. If I could see anybody perform dead or alive, I would pick... Bill Burr. Bill Burr. If I, I haven't ha- seen him live. You so. never seen him live? No. Oh, so you just saw him like in passing. Yeah, I don't like I don't like seeing people in like big arenas. Yeah, I would rather yeah. see him at a if I could yeah. see him at a comedy club. Yeah, that should be for sweet. for free. That'd yeah. be great. <laughs> yeah. All right, last question. James Camacho is putting on his own comedy show. He can pick any four comics in the world, dead or alive, to be on the show. Opener, host, middle, middle, close. You can also pick yourself. Who would you pick? So I guess if it's my show, I'd probably host it. No, you know that's not true. I would get a really, really good host. Um, hosts I can think of that are like this guy uh, James Mattern in the city is one of the best MCs ever. Um, so maybe he could host, and then I would do it an opening spot. Maybe nah, fuck that. I would. So it's the your show, yeah, yeah, it's my <laughs> show. So I would maybe go on second. Then I would have like um, it's tough because I don't want to just say famous people because then it's like. I, I'm just gonna have strangers on my yeah. show, you know. Yeah. But the closer would be someone like I guess Bill Burr, you know. Then I would go on before him, and then the people before me would probably be like just like ugh, I don't know, man. Like, is it is it a show? Like, just anyone. Anyone you want, dead or alive. All right, then we'll just have like um. Yeah. Um. I guess I would just have like Burr, Chappelle, um. Um, me, I'm trying to think who would, who could host, um, just, I want, I want the host to be someone I like have a relationship yeah, with, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. Mattern, Mattern's been done a lot for me, um, and then maybe somewhere in the, in like, else there, I'm trying to think of like, maybe like, um, Lynn Coplets, okay. you know, just to balance, you know, balance things out so it's not just. Dicks, you know. And who's the closer, Chappelle or Burr? I will. I would let them decide what they want to do there. You know, I don't think I can really tell. Yeah, you can't one tell of, either one. I can't tell one or the other two. And uh, it's hard because you're a Burr fan more than a Chappelle, right? Yeah, but I, I, I don't know. It just depends on who they. I mean, either, either could follow the other. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just I feel like my answers are so boring. I said Bill Burr for fucking everything. So listen, that's most most comics. Is yeah, Bill Burr. I get a lot of Patrice O'Neal. I get a lot of yeah. Louis. You yeah, know? I'm trying. I, I I right now I can't I can't think of uh anyone. Like I really can't think of like Burr, Dave. I'm trying like just legendary uh comp Kevin. Uh, Maybe Kevin Arkin host because you know instead of doing host, instead yeah. of doing that Oscar gig, he could just host my show. Yeah, you know? I think I think he'd be pretty happy with that. All right, that's a pretty good show. Yeah. How much you how much you charge for that show? How much would I I would ma- I would want to make it affordable for people? Yeah. So maybe sure. like twenty bucks. You oh, know. Shit. Yeah, I I'd probably lose money, but um, I would I like that's one thing I like that Louis did. Louis made his um the tickets to his shows affordable. Yeah. Like even Pete Davies, I think like to see him perform. It's not that it's like a hundred something. No, it's like a hundred something bucks. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's but 
Dave. Yeah. Whatever. But it's Dave. Yeah. But you, yeah, he he he's definitely more like I, you know, I'm gonna. You gotta pay to see see this, you know. Yeah. Well, shit. He didn't get paid for a long time with Comedy Central. Yeah, yeah. That's, what it, that's probably why. All right, man. Yo, it's been weird. It's been an amazing show. Thank you so much, Camacho, man, for coming out here. We yes, want to just plug a couple things that you got coming up, man. Uh, May 18th on Amazon, iTunes. Are we gonna try on Spotify yet too, or no? So for the it's pre order on iTunes and Amazon, and then all like Spotify, Apple Music, all the streaming services. Um, I think even TikTok, it'll all it'll all come in um the actual release date, which is the I'm, May 18th, I'm such a piece Tuesday. of shit. I don't know anything. Sixteenth is a Saturday, so Monday is seventeenth. No, maybe nineteenth. Then it's nineteenth. Yeah, May nineteenth. <laughs> May nineteenth. <laughs> May nineteenth, man. May nineteenth. Yes. I'm just a kid podcast. Uh, is that what? How do you? When does that come out? I'm just a kid podcast. It's it's up. I've done a bunch of episodes. It's on um, Spotify, Apple Podcast, uh, SoundCloud, Google Play. Uh, it's on YouTube for video. It's basic. It's a it's a fun podcast. I just ask people on. I have people on ask them about their times in high school. I have like. Um, like some pretty big comics, some pretty big actors, and just anyone I find interesting, you know. Yeah, sick. Just man. talk about high school and um, yeah, you know, just relive prom and you know losing your virginity. <laughs> the good fun. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The good times, man. Okay, so yeah, definitely check out the I'm Just a Kid podcast. You can check him out on the Camacho Camach Bro Show uh, on his uh, Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Uh, the extra credit uh, album is coming out May nineteenth. Uh, as of June first. He's going to be on the LOL Network with Kevin Hart, man. Yeah. Definitely got to drop that. Check that out. And obviously, you can check him out on... He's been in videos with Jay-Z. Right? Where, where, where can they find that video at? That's just a, um, I Got the Keys music video. Yeah, check it's out the I Got the YouTube, Keys. Yeah. Yeah, you get a little little Camacho, uh, yeah. little, little Camacho spotlight in there. Yeah. And he's been killing on Instagram and TikTok. Give, him, give everybody your ad name. At Camacho Bro. Everywhere. C-A-M... A C H B R O on everything Twitter, uh, Instagram, TikTok, and uh, jamescamacho.com slash shows for all tour dates. I'm going to be in like Florida next month. I'll be in Connecticut. I'll be in Washington State. Fucking that's shit. Sick. That's a long flight. Um, and then I think I'm going to be in like Chicago and um, just a, I guess just look on the website. And New York City always. New York City, New Jersey. I'll be, you know, doing sp- shows all the time. Definitely, man. Yo, so it's been Camacho Bro, man, James Camacho on the Poppy's World Podcast. Great episode, episode nine. Make sure you come out to the Wild and Wednesday show on next week but every, and every week, but specifically on June 9th where we're going to have Camacho Bro come and kill the stage. And check me out every week for the Poppy's World Podcast. And remember that thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you guys next week. Later. That was open, that's why I didn't offer it to you, but it's not. Uh, like, I'll, 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 I'll,